dear students we are going to start with the next unit unit number 9 object oriented reception handling in which we will discuss about the three lessons the lesson number 1 explaining class based reception handling lesson number 2 defining and raising receptions and lesson number 3 implementing advanced reception handling techniques so start with the first lesson lesson number 1 explaining class based reception handling in this lesson we will study about what are the class based receptions how we can handle it and how we can debug class based receptions so starting with the first topic an overview of the class based reception concepts as you already know about an reception then reception is an intermediate state or intermediate situation between the program and an execution after which it is irrelevant to continue the program any further or you can also say that the exception is a run time anomalies that may occur any time during the execution of the program so in this example we will see how exception and exception handling are realized using classes so in this figure you can see an exception is represented by an exception object this is an instance of an exception class exception classes are predefined in sap abap however user can also define an exception class an exception is always raised using the raise exception statement you can see we are raising here the exception and that we are providing a type cx underscore exception which is a predefined exception class in sap abap you can also define your omen class or uh, either you can use already predefined exception classes come to the next topic exception classes the inheritance hierarchy as i already told in the previous slides we have already predefined exception classes in sap abap exception classes are already predefined in the system all exception classes are derived from the main class cx underscore root which implement the interface if underscore messages so this if if underscore message interface contains get underscore text method which return an exception text in form of a string the cx root underscore root cannot be inherited directly therefore a new exception class that is defined is inherited from any of its subclass such as cx underscore no underscore check cx underscore dialing underscore check and cx underscore static underscore check the method get underscore source underscore position returns certain details such as the name of the main program name of the include program and the line number in the source code where the exception occurred apart from that we have number of attributes of this class as you know generally a class is represented in case of uml diagram using the rectangular box the first first component display or describe the class name second the attributes of the class and third one the methods so we have three attributes of this class text id kernel error id and previous come to the next topic this is the structure of a try and end try block generally when an exception is occur during the execution of the program we can handle that exception using the try and end try block an exception that is raised is handled using the catch statement which is always inside the try and end try block when an exception is raised the system automatically searches for an appropriate catch statement in the try and try block if a handler is not available in the try and try block then the clean up block is automatically executed so this is an example of the syntax of handling the predefined exceptions as you can see we are taking here the two parameters p underscore int one type i p underscore into type i we are getting the input from the user 
data gb underscore result type is integer gb underscore text type is string gx underscore exc type refer to the cx underscore root which is a exception class which is a root exception class and we are creating the reference variable of the that class now applying the try and end try because we are expecting that the in this statement the exception may occur so we are applying here the try and end try outside of this blocks so you can see this is a jv underscore result equal to pa underscore int one multiply by pa underscore into right jv underscore result catch now we are taking a catch statement catch cx underscore sy underscore arithmetic underscore overflow into gx underscore exc and gb underscore tax equal to gx underscore exc get tax and then giving the message gb underscore tax type is i let us be look how the program is executing and how it display the exception error onto the screen you can see suppose user are entering p underscore int one value which is very larger than the limit of the integer Similarly, the user can also enter the value of the integer 2 which may be the larger than the specified value of the integer. So, when it will multiply with this one, it will overflow and it will give an overflow error occurs and the runtime system receives an exception which is an cx underscore sy underscore arithmetic overflow. It automatically catches the uh, exception and put into the gx underscore exc which is in reference to the main root class of the exceptions and on the basis of that reference variable we can print or get the text so we are getting the text as i have shown in the last slide you can see we have get underscore text method in case of interfaces so how we can get it how we can call it because these classes cannot directly access this interface method but cx root reference variable can access this interface method because it is going to implement the method of this interface so you can see here gx underscore exe which is calling the get underscore text method of the interface and putting the value or assigning the value to the gb underscore text having the type string and with the help of predefined method message gv underscore text type is i so it will automatically display overflow in the operation message onto the screen now come to the next topic class based exception in debugging mode as i have already told you you can go to the debugging mode directly or by using the slash edge after running the program in debugging mode an exception is caught in the catch block the user is intimated through a success message you can see an, if there is no exception then it will directly display your success message if exception is there then it will display like this one an exception is occurred so if we have number of exceptions and if you want to see the previous exceptions Using a debugger, there is an option last exception object you can see, or you can also display trigger location. When you click on it, it will uh, automatically transfer the control to the particular line. So, this was all about the lesson number one of the unit number nine. Thank you so much for watching my videos. If you really like my videos, please press the like button.